Lesson 5, the second declension. So here we're introduced into this word declension. What does it mean? It basically means a pattern. These 10 vocabulary words here are of the second declension. They are of the O pattern. And if you notice, they all have the same ending of the Omicron Sigma, the OS, which is why they are in the O pattern. We also notice that all of them have an acute accent on the penult. All of these words have two syllables. And so even though this first accent is the penult, it is the second syllable from the end of the word. In the Greek, there are a total of three patterns, three declensions. And we are going to be starting with the second one, which is the O pattern. In the homework, we will be writing these on a vocabulary card. Now, just as a reminder, when we talked about verbs in lesson four, we were conjugating verbs. And I will just show the present indicative active card. This is the conjugation of a verb. And what we are going to be doing now is we are going to be declining a noun. So here we have the eight case system. Okay, what is a case? So in the English, the English uses the order of words primarily to denote meaning. For example, the subject is usually listed first, followed by the verb, and then you have your direct object and or indirect object. Not all languages use word order to denote relationships. For example, the Greek uses a case system. You will find the subject listed at the end of sentences all the time in the Greek, and you know that it's the subject because of the case that it's in, namely this nominative case of subject. So when you see a word logos, you know that it is acting as a noun. So I will list all of these for you. We have the nominative, genitive, ablative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, vocative. Now, a lot of the modern day Greek grammars that have been written teach the five case system. And you can see that because of the form that these words have when we put them in a case. The genitive and ablative case, the word is going to look exactly the same in the singular and over here in the plural. Here we've got the locative, instrumental, and dative case. They all look the same in the singular and they look the same in the plural. So learning a five case over an eight case, it's really a matter of the form of the word over the function of the word. And I personally think it's more important to learn the functions of the words and to learn them in the 8K system, which is why I'm creating this playlist, because I have looked for modern day teachings in the 8K and I haven't found any. And so I'm making it myself because I think that it is important. Okay, so. When you are looking at the text, and I'll pull it back up here, and you're looking at number 25, part A, and it does go on to the next, the next page, I personally spent a lot of time trying to just absorb this information, and especially here when we're talking about what the case translates to. A lot of it is basically a preposition of a word, from a word, in or at a word, with, by, to or for. These are kind of prepositions that is encoded into the form of the word, which again 
we're denoting relationships between words in the sentence. It took me a long time to really understand that. And later on, we do come across instances where Greek does have prepositions and they do spell them out in its own separate word. But in the English, the, the thing about a case system is it's completely foreign to us. We don't use a case system because we use prepositions on their standalone word in the order of words. Now, for example, for any of you Star Wars fans out there, Yoda would always put the subject of his sentence at the end. Speak like Yoda, we will. Grammatically speaking, the sentence is really, we will speak like Yoda. But in putting that subject at the end, it has a different, um, it could have a different interpretation to it. And in the Greek, again, you will find nominatives and subjects almost anywhere in the sentence, depending on what the writer is trying to emphasize by putting at the beginning in position. Now again, when we look at these words, we're going to just note that the accent, it remains on the same syllable throughout the declension here. It's on the omicron, that first omicron. And it is like that in every single instance here. When we are declining a noun or a substantive, the accent is kept, if possible, on the very same syllable in which it rests in the nominative case. So basically what this is saying is that you can only know where the accent goes on the word when you learn it in the nominative. And when we do look at lexicons later, all of our words are going to be listed in the nominative singular. So you really should be looking at where the accent is. And when you write these words out, you're going to have to learn where the accent is placed. Now that was different in the verbs. Those were recessive. And in the exercise for this lesson, we will be starting our reference card for our accent rules. So we're going to go back to this card here. And we're just going to talk about these a little bit more before we close out the lesson. So there are eight cases and they have five case forms. Nominative, genitive, ablative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, vocative. The nominative case is the case of subject, and it corresponds roughly to the English nominative, English subject. The genitive is the specifying case, and in English, it's expressed by a possessive or the objective of of. The ablative is a whence case. Uh, origin or separation, and in the English that is expressed by off, out, from, away, some kind of separation from something. Flocative is the in case, and it corresponds to English in, on, among, at, by. The instrumental is the case of means or association, and in English it is expressed by with, by, etc. Now notice the locative and the instrumental could both mean by. The dative, and honestly,